for the bill to take unnecessary time. I call the Honourable Louise Upston. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, I am pleased to take a call in this uh, debate on the shortened report back that the um, Minister for the Environment, the Honourable um, David Parker, has proposed. And for those who are listening and uh, may not have seen one of these debates before, uh, when the suggestion of a truncated debate is being proposed, uh, it's a month. The normal report back for any piece of legislation is six months. Right. So to have a report back in, in three days over a month is quite frankly appalling. Um, but Madam Speaker, I'm finding myself in a bit, of a, um, a, a bit of a contradiction in terms of when the government wants uh, the public to have scrutiny and when it doesn't. Um, so in terms of one of the other points that the Honourable David Parker made, uh, I felt it was worth explaining, um, not just to the House, Madam Speaker, but to those who might be watching over the internet or listening on their radio or watching uh, this debate live on TV, um, because we do have a unicameral system. Uh, it means that our parliament and the scrutiny of the executive and decisions that are made by the government is more precious, because there isn't an upper house. There is no other scrutiny. So when a piece of legislation like the Exclusive Economic Zone and Continental Shelf Environmental Effects Amendment Bill is put before this parliament, then the only opportunity for scrutiny is by the Select Committee. And not just the Select Committee, Madam Speaker. Um, the key opportunity is for members of the public. And the Minister's made a number of comments about the fact that um, you know, it, it's a simple piece of legislation but actually from a public scrutiny and accountability uh, consideration, whether it's simple or complex, is irrelevant. It is about scrutiny. It's about public accountability. It's about transparency. So when we have a, re a shortened report back with little over a month, um, and Madam Speaker, a, a budget in the middle of it, I might, I might add, um, so the ability for submitters to consider the implications and particularly when members opposite have said, want to make sure that there are no mistakes. Uh, and members on this side have talked about the need of the parliamentary process of the select committee to go through the legislation with a fine tooth comb, to make sure there are no mistakes and no unintended consequence. That is the role, that is a precious role that our parliament holds dear in terms of the scrutiny of legislation. And Madam, Ch Madam Speaker, I would be deeply concerned um, if this is a continual habit to have shortened report backs for, for pieces of legislation. And the other side say, well, it's not significant. I would have thought the Greens would have thought it was incredibly significant for those who are requesting uh, permits in this piece of legislation, the, economic e the Exclusive Economic Zone and Continental Shelf Environmental Effects Amendment Bill, I would have thought they thought it was critical. So the ability for the public to have a say, for the public to hear from the parliamentary select committee uh, that, who will look after this piece of legislation, the ability for them to advertise that this bill is open for public consultation, the commitment of this parliament, Madam Speaker, to get legislation right, and particularly in this case, given that there has been an error, uh, which is why this legislation is before us, I'm somewhat puzzled, and the, and the minister opposite didn't outline and did not explain why, why only a month is being given in terms of this report back. Um, that is a crying shame in terms of scrutiny. And, and if, if it is, as the members opposite say, that it is simple, so, Madam Speaker, I'm going to argue the other side of this one just um, to, to see if they are listening. Uh, if it is as simple and straightforward as they would have the House believe, why don't they take my colleague, the Honourable Scott Simpson's proposition? Why didn't they um, put it through all stages today if it was so straightforward and so urgent? So, so the government can't argue both ways on this extension, on this, sorry, on this report back that's been shortened. It's truncated to just over a month when the normal period is six months. So it puts a huge burden on the public who might want to submit on this legislation, a huge burden. So let's say, for example, I'll, I'll, walk, I'll walk the House through it. If the report back is the 11th of June, 
then the public submissions, if they're lucky, they might get a week. They might get a week to consider what that side of the House has already said is a significant and important piece of legislation, and our exclusive economic zone is a critical part of New Zealand's environment. And so less than a week for submitters to submit on a piece of legislation that every member of this House wants to ensure is accurate and is correct. So, Madam Speaker, I'm, I'm, I'm deeply puzzled as to why we have a government that insists and persists in shortened report backs for select committee. Uh, and it's a trend that we've seen in a number of different pieces of legislation. It's a trend that is damaging New Zealand's democracy. That side of the House, uh, Madam Speaker, might uh, think that it's boring. But the members of the New Zealand public who hold this democracy dear to them want to know that this is a parliament, that this, oh, actually this is a government, this is a government that is committed to transparency, right. to accountability, to the ability for scrutiny of legislation that's put before this House. And unfortunately, I'm not sure that the Ardern Peters government can give that commitment to the New Zealand public. And Mr Speaker, this is important. When we talk about a truncated select committee process, so giving members of the public less, potentially less than a week for them to provide a submission, to provide a submission, well, the members opposite can change their mind. Members opposite can change their mind. I'm sure my, my colleague would be happy to put the motion again if, you, if you're in such a rush. But you can't have it both ways. You can't have a shortened report back and truncate it to just over one month, which is absolutely outrageous in terms of the public's ability to interact with our parliament, to interact with the legislation. It's sort of smacking of a government uh, who knows best. And I would really hate to see that the new government only six months in has a bit of a pattern of not allowing New Zealand to participate in the legislative process. So happy, I, I, I'm happy to suggest to the House that uh, my colleague put the motion again if, if, if that side of the House is indicating, which, which Mr Speaker, they are. They are indicating very strongly that they are ready to uh, pass this legislation through all stages. Um, uh, you know, it would be, would be good, um, Ms. the Honourable Scott Simpson, to, to put your motion again. They've, they've obviously had a, a change of heart, um, which is interesting to see. So, so for those in the whips chair, text Text the minister, text the minister, and make sure that he's um, happy to change his perspective on the report back, uh, which he's currently truncated to the 11th of June. Just make sure he's uh, now ready, Mr. Speaker, uh, to come on board with the motion that the Honourable Scott Simpson has put on the floor. Great motion. Great motion to get this piece of business dealt with. That is, that is, of course, unless the government wants it fast back to the House so that you've got more legislation to debate, and that's the real reason behind a truncated select committee process, because this side of the House is still failing to understand why, on the one hand, you say you need the time, and on the other hand, you're saying that side of the House is saying, let's get on with it. Let's get on with it. That's, that's the invitation from the Ardern Peters government for this particular piece of legislation. So, so if, if this is an, indeed something else, and it's not about the importance of the legislation, and it's, and it's the need for the Environment Select Committee to have uh, a piece of work, if, if that's the real agenda behind a truncated report back, well, that's sad. That's really sad. But, but that is an option. It is, a, it is one of the reasons that um, the, the Minister may have wanted uh, to have a, a truncated uh, report back to the 11th of June. There's a few members of the Select Committee opposite that are sort of looking down a bit now. Maybe that is the real business. They're looking for things to do. They're a bit bored. Being a backbench MP is not that much fun unless you've got crunchy Select Committee work to do. Um, well, in terms of scrutiny of legislation, that's the critical part. That's the critical role for the government backbench MPs. Um, so you have to examine the legislation, make sure your ministers haven't made mistakes, make sure the ministers haven't made mistakes, give good scrutiny to every single piece of legislation, and not be willing to tolerate shortened report backs, such as this one, which is just over a month, 
which is outrageous, and New Zealanders will be disappointed in the government for doing this. Uh, my call, Simon O'Connor. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you very much. I look very pleased to uh, speak to why, I suppose, examining the whole question of why we are looking to truncate uh, this process around the exclusive economic zone and continental shelf amendment bill. There are a number of